All right, and then uh, we have these J hooks. Take this off so nobody can touch your head. So just turn it out and then turn it out. I can hear it now. Maybe. No, I don't know. No one here. Can you guys see me or can you help me? Amy, you can, whoever, Matthew, we have one more pull here. Actually, you three are okay. You can. Uh, but you can still get into position without the rig. Okay. All right, so right off the bat, our squat stance. You should have pretty much the same squat stance. Uh, no matter what you're doing. So we have a lot of different squats. Your squat stance is going to stay the same. It's about shoulder width. So if you know the, you know about how wide the shoulders are, try to set your feet right underneath your squat. Okay, that was pretty good. Now, we want to watch what our feet are doing. We don't want to squat with our feet turned out too much. Okay, this creates a lot of issues. We'll get into this a little deeper uh, later on. But try to keep your feet as straight as possible. Most people will be able to kind of hang in this uh, 10, 15 degree angle. I'm okay with that. Okay, now go ahead and grab onto the rig. And then just passively sit down in your squat. We're going to check some points here. If you have any injuries or any pain, please let me know so we don't do this. So go ahead and hang onto the rig. And I just want you to kind of relax down there. Now, first thing we want to look at are our feet flat on the floor. Okay, yeah. so your, your your foot should be flat on the floor. Yeah. And I mean, unless you have a blown ankle and you don't have full range of motion. Okay, now can we pull our chest upright? So give me a big chest, you'll feel that upper back kind of light up. Okay, so use your hands to pull yourself out of the squat. Go ahead and stand. So everybody, you know, so physically, I think everybody here can get down in a full squat, right? Okay, did anybody have any severe pain or anything that's out of the norm? Okay, so now um, nobody can say I can't squat because I just see you guys squat a little curl, right? Okay, now this, this one's a little bit trickier. So exactly like I said, get down in that same position. Make sure your feet are flat on the floor. Hang on to the pole. Pull your chest up. Now, as soon as you let go of this pole, your position should not change, okay? So when I say three, I'm you're gonna let go of this pole. If you think you're gonna fall, don't let go of the pole. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm gonna let go right about here. <laughs> okay, grab back on. Okay, go ahead and stand. <laughs> so as soon as you let go, you can feel your entire system light up, right? That's your brain firing all these neurons trying to get the exact muscles that's needed to get you in position. Okay, if you're not used to squatting, that's an overload, and that's where you're balancing all over the place. You know, you, you lean forward, so there's a lot going on there. Like I said, the more you do this, you get to the point where your brain knows exactly what to fire. Okay? So this is usually the, the tricky part. Um, but you'll see by the end of this clinic, you should have a lot more balance, just, just from right in the kitchen. But it's good there. Okay? Um, so the deadlift, full range of motion is 90 degrees. If I, if I lean forward, so hip hinge, Notice my spine doesn't move, it stays nice and flat. I should be able to get my chest parallel to the floor, which I cannot, I'm a bit stiff in the hamstring. You can see I'm a bit short, okay? So what I want everybody to do, go ahead and lie on your back. Okay, so we're basically doing the same thing, except the floor will put you in neutral so you keep your spine flat. So you should be able to keep your knee completely locked and bring your leg to about 90 degrees. Hold that for me. If you're really struggling here, then we have flexibility issues. If your knee is unlocked, you have flexibility issues. You should be able to keep your knee locked. Okay, go ahead and rest. Let's try the other leg. Just keep your head flat on the floor. If you can't keep your leg straight, if you're fighting your ass off to keep your leg up there, we have flexibility issues. Okay, go ahead and rest. Does anybody feel a little bit of a challenge there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So most, most people have a, you know, stiff hamstrings there, which uh, we can work on and improve. And that's just to show you, that's full range of motion we should be able to get tonight. Make sense? Okay, go ahead and stand. 
All right, now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. So we'll get on the open floor here. Everybody come on over to this corner. I'm gonna give you guys a stick. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. Hi, hey, hey. Some ice cream. I know. We've been about it since like 6 a.m. Like, should I go get one now and another one later? Yeah. It's cold. It's never too cold for us, coffee. He's got to put up a bunch of layers like, until like, you're getting sparked from layers and walking like this. All right, so let's kind of spread it out on the floor. Let's go on. Um, so let me have five on this front row, green mats, four on the second row, and then four on the back row. Amy, you can come up here. All right, so this is going to be the drill to work on keeping neutral spine. The number one rule for preventing injury, okay? So when you put this stick on your mid-back, we have three points that should be making contact. My tailbone, my mid-back, and my head. Can everybody see those three points? Okay, when we move through these movements, those three points should always be in contact. If at any time you lose any of those three points, your spine is moving. When your spine is moving on the road, you get hurt. Does that mean, or you, your chance for injury goes way up. That make sense? Okay. So we're going to work on a basic hip hinge. A hip hinge is just what I did over there. All we're doing is hit, hinging at the hip without moving our spine. So what I want, you guys are going to keep three points. And all we're going to do is hip hinge. So you can see all three points are still connected throughout the hip hinge. Okay. So let's just practice that first. Everybody put the sticks where I said. Make sure the head is also on there. And give me five hip hinges. So you can unlock your knees just a little bit. If anybody is losing those positions, let me know and we'll take a look and we'll fix it. Yeah, it's supposed to be on your tailbone. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, the most common fault you're going to see in the deadlift is that spinal flexion. And usually with this drill, what you're going to see, if you look at my tailbone here, as I come down, if I go into flexion, this bottom comes off. That makes sense? Okay. So when you go into flexion and if you're dead and you're squatting, you have extra load on you, that's where you blow a disc. Okay. If you're in neutral, you're, you're okay. There's not that pressure on the disc. Um, second one, not quite as serious, but it's still a spinal fault is the head. Your neck is still part of your spine. Okay. When you're deadlifting and squatting, there shouldn't be any movement through the spine. Okay. So that's why the head should also stay in that position. Cool? Okay, now we're going to add another element to it. We're going to get into the squat. We're going to hip hinge just like we did, and then we're going to drop into the squat. So now you're going through more range of motion, so it's more challenging neurologically to keep that flat back. What it's going to look like is this here. So remember, we're in our squat stance, what we were in over there. So you're going to hinge. Once you feel the hamstrings tight up, then we're going to drop into the squat. Okay? What, what I'm wanting to avoid is this, if, if you look at my tailbone again, this pops off. That means the spine is going into flexion. Okay. I'm going to count you guys out on this. I'm going to say hinge and then squat. Okay. So put the stick on your spine behind your back there. Let's go shoulder width with our feet. Feet fairly straight. Go ahead and hinge and squat. Bring your hips back up and stand. Okay, we're gonna go a few times here. Go ahead and hinge, squat, raise your hips, and stand back up. Last one here. Go ahead and hinge, squat, raise your hips, 
Let's stay back up. All right, go to rest. Pretty good. Okay. Does everybody understand the, the goal of that drill there? Okay. So it's funny, especially if you're new to this movement, you, you're looking like you're moving like a robot. I'm okay with that because you're not going to get hurt. The more and more you do this, the energy starts to flow, you start speed moving up because your brain already knows how to get into position. Okay. But in the beginning, don't worry about any, what anybody else thinks. They're probably deadlifting or squatting wrong, anyways. You just move like your robot and stay safe. Cool? Okay, so now you can just set your sticks off to the side. So that was number one rule. That was neutral spine. Okay, that comes before anything else. You can do these drills at home. You can find a chair and work on that mobility. You can find a broomstick, work on neutral spine. Practice. That's all it takes. Now we're going to get into the loading sequence and the torque I was talking about. Okay, so let's get back into our squat stance, shoulder width. Remember, don't toe out, just slightly, I'm okay with it. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we call it getting organized. If, you, if you're a basketball fan or a sports fan, all these professional athletes have a sequence they go through every time. So on a free throw, you know, a basketball player does the exact same amount of balance, he is set. That's how you guys should move to avoid injury. Okay. So when you go through this getting organized, first off, we're going to set our shoulders. So we say, put your shoulders in your back pockets. What you're going to do is shrug up. You're going to pull your shoulder blades back, and then you're going to set them down in your back pockets. What that's doing is activating the lats. It's activating that upper back. So you have a nice flat back, and we're not in this position. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's number one, shoulders pull back and down. Number two, you're going to engage the abs. If someone was to walk by and Suck you in the gut, you automatically flinch. So your body knows how to get into neutral. That flinch is your body putting your spine into neutral because it has to protect it. Okay? So everybody engage the abs there. So keep these tight. Does anybody have any issues keeping those tight? Okay? Third is your butt. So squeeze your butt cheeks. Okay? So shoulders, abs, and butt, that locks the spine in place. Okay? Now the spine is neutral. The trick is keeping it in neutral. So the first piece to this load sequence is going to be hips. You want to initiate with the hips. All that it is, yeah. is the first thing I'm going to do is pull my hips back. Okay? So keep everything tight. Pull your hips back. And then from there, just squeeze your butt cheek back to neutral. Okay? A cue we use is if you've ever had groceries or your kid and you have to close your car door, that's all you're doing. Okay? So give me about five reps. Or close your car door, come back to neutral. Don't forget about the shoulders, big chest, close your car door, back to neutral. Don't forget about the chest, I don't want to see this here. Okay, still keep a nice big chest. So when you guys do that, pay attention to what's going on with these hamstrings. You should feel them light up on you, right? Okay, that's what we want working. We want the hamstrings, we want the glutes working. Those are the big muscles that do a lot more work, okay? The problem we see here is most people initiate with the knees. So a lot of times in the squat, we'll see this first rather than this. Does that make sense? As soon as you load the knees, you're loading the quads and the low back. So now the low back's under a lot of stress, the knees are under a lot of stress. Okay, so that's a simple fix you guys can do to not get hurt and to push more weight, okay? Now, let's bring our hand up for balance. This is gonna help you guys balance a little bit, okay? So you're still going to close the car door, but I want you to reach up nice and high. Go ahead and close the car door. So when you reach up, you can feel that upper back working, right? Give me five there. Close the car door, big reach. All right. Go ahead and rest. Okay, good job. Now we're going to start to sink our hips down into the bottom of the squat like we're in over there. This is where the torque comes in. So we can create a lot of torque in the hips. All that torque is, if you look at my legs, I'm externally rotating. Can you see this rotation? That rotation in the hip is creating a lot of power and stability in the hip, in the knees, and the ankle. Okay? If you don't add that torque, what your squat's going to look like are your knees in here. Okay? So with my knees in, the glutes aren't engaged, the hamstrings aren't engaged. And again, the low back has to take the brunt of the work. And that's where you get hurt, okay? So right off the bat, let's get back in our squat stance. Get organized, so shoulders, abs, 
glutes. Now I want you to screw your, plate, your feet into the floor. Imagine you're standing on two plates and you're trying to turn those plates out, but I don't want your toes to come out. So press that big toe to the floor, screw your feet into the floor. You should feel the fingers rotate out. Can everybody feel that? Just keep doing that for me. Let me see if I can see everybody's legs that to the top. All right. Does that make sense to everybody? Now I just want to show you real quick the difference between squatting with your feet straight and squatting with your feet out, which a lot of people do. Go ahead and turn your feet out like this. Now, try to create that torque. Try to add that. There's not much going on there, right? You can't create any torque like this. Okay? So that's why we want to keep our feet as straight as possible. Okay, so now, hands back up for balance. Get organized. Shoulders pull back and down. Abs are tight. Butts tight. Okay? Screw your feet into the floor. Close the car door. Now, you're going to sink your butt right between your heels. Don't forget about the torque. So as I drop down, if you watch my knees, they stay out. They stay out nice and wide. Stay out, stay out. Take it all the way down. Now we're going to start working a little bit. And stand. Squeeze your butt at the top. Okay, when you squeeze your butt at the top, it means that the pelvis is neutral. Go ahead and rest your shoulders a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to start working on the balance here. The more reps you do, you'll start playing the balance. You got to keep the heels glued to the floor. Okay. Some of you, what's going to want to happen is you're going to want to come on to this. Okay? That's just a balance issue. So slow it down. Once you start to feel your hips come up, pause right there. Shift your hips back. Get those hips back down. If that's as far as you can go, hang out there for a bit. If you can continue going, then we're going to try to get all the way down. Okay? Get organized. Shoulders pull back and down. Abs tight. Squeeze your butt. Create the torque. Hands up for balance. Let's close the car door. Drop your hips, get those knees out. Down, down, down. Hold. Hold. And stand. Squeeze your butt at the top. Everybody feeling okay? Any pain? All right, we're just gonna do it So some tight backs. There's gonna be some things tightening up because we're not used to the movements. That's normal. As long as we don't have any sharp pain, okay? All right, so I want you guys to do a set of 10 on this one, okay? So not fast, get organized, just nice and slow, down, squeeze your butt, nice and slow, down. Give me about 10 reps on your own there. So load the hips first, close the car door. There you go, now drop down. There you go. All right. Your body will uh, talk to you. If you get a lot of popping in your knees when you squat, your loading sequence is off. You're loading the knees first. Okay? Or as soon as you squat, if you got a pop, that's probably because you're bending your knees first. Get the hips back and then sink down. <laughs> Sometimes it's just age, baby. <laughs> so everybody is already squatting a lot better. Okay? You said you learn movement with movement. Okay. And with no load, it's very hard to hurt yourself. So don't be afraid if you're air squatting on because you don't have any load on you. Um, an incorrect air squat is still much better than no squat at all. Okay, we just can't put any load on us until we push. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so I, I do want to go over a uh, back squat before we move on. So a back squat, this is probably uh, one of the most common squatting movements that most people are familiar with. It's just a barbells on your back, and then we're squatting, right? Okay? So go ahead and pick your stick back up. Everything we just went over stays the same. You still get organized. You still stay braced. You still pull the hips back and down. All we're doing here is we're adding an object, okay? Correct position. For the back squat, you want to make sure the bar is not on your spine. So if you're squatting up here, you feel the bar on your spine. That's uncomfortable. You don't need that weight on your spine. So all you need to do is roll this down a bit until you get into the traps. Okay, so the meat. 
So from there, we want to create a shelf so you're actually going to drive your own back slightly. You don't need them back here, but just enough where you start to feel that upper back tighten up. Does that make sense, everybody? If you're stiff, like myself, through the pecs and the front delt, you might have to go with a little wider grip. If you're nice and flexible, stay more narrow. Okay? So drive those elbows back. Let's get in our squat stance. Let's get organized. The shoulders, abs, glutes, create the torque in the hips. Let's close the car door. Sink your hips, keep those knees out, keep a nice big chest. Take it as far as you can. Look straight forward and stand. Squeeze your butt at the top. Here we go again. Hips back, down, drive those knees out. And stand. You can eight more on your own. So this will be more challenging because now you don't have your hand in front of you for the balance. You have to create your own balance. Just a little more vertical. Big check. Yeah, everybody's looking real good. Hey, does anybody have any questions so far? Does anything feel off? Is there something going on with the body or the balance that you're not sure why it's happening? Now's the chance to ask. We'll fix it. Okay. So it's what sort of routine do we follow through back in? So you're actually pressing your feet into the floor. Okay? So when you get to the bottom, try not to think, um, I just gotta pull my torso up. Actually imagine, so a lot of you have probably done the leg press where you press your feet into the pad, that pushes the, it's the same thing. So as you come out, you're gonna press your feet into the floor, which is actually gonna drive you up. Okay? The hips and shoulders need to rise at the same rate. So this is another point. So if you watch my knees and my or my hips and my shoulders, everything comes up together. Sometimes what happens is the hips will rise first and then the chest comes up. Okay? Everything needs to come out and work together. If that's happening, you need to lighten the load. Cool? Does that make sense, Carl? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about range of motion. So a lot of times people will short the squat. Okay, it's either Honestly, most of the time it's an ego thing. People will do, you know, a quarter quarterback squat because you push more weight, obviously, because you're only moving a quarter of the weight. Forget about the weight, forget about people watching, nobody's watching them anyways. Lie in the load, even if you need a squat with a stick, and get all the way down in your squat. Okay? It's gonna benefit you, like we talked about, longevity long term, plus you're actually gonna see more muscle gain, more fat loss, more tone because you're getting into deeper. Uh, tissues, tissue that's not used in this position, okay? But we must move to a form pain-free range of motion. Obviously, if you're having pain in the body, don't go into that position. There's something going on there. But if you can squat all the way down, you need to get all the way down, okay? Sound good? No quarter squat. All right, before we move on to the deadlift, are there any questions on the squat? We could spend a long time on the squat, but we've got to get um, to the next move, okay? So this one is not quite as uh, compli or complicated because it doesn't require as much flexibility. In the squat, you need to have ankle range of motion, you need to have knee range of motion, hip, thoracic spine, shoulder, there's a lot going on there. The deadlift is mostly hamstring. Okay? A little bit of knee, but you can see the knee is not nearly as far forward and there's very little ankle. You can always keep your ankle at home. Okay? So now we did the drill. With the three points in the beginning, the deadlift, all you're doing is that drill, except you're gonna have a bar or a kettlebell or a dumbbell or your kids in front of you. Okay? So go ahead and bring your bar right to your hips. So I'm gonna basically go over a traditional deadlift. There's a lot of deadlifts today, we only have time for traditional. So stance in the deadlift is a little more narrow than your squat. Squat is shoulder width, deadlift is hip width. And an easy way to find that if you ever want to use someone's house, 
what to feed on the rug. That's how you use it. Like. Again, keeping this straight here. Okay. From here, it's the same thing. We're going to get organized. So shoulders pull back and down. If your abs are tight, your glutes are tight, and we're closing the car door. Sit your hips back. Keep a nice big chest. Squeeze your butt. Close the car door. Squeeze your butt. Give me three more there. Okay, go in there. Now, this loading sequence, hips back and down, it's the same as the squat, but it's very important in the deadlift because if you load the knees first, what's going to happen is now I got to take the barbell out and around my knees. Okay, anytime you're under load, the further the load gets away from you, the heavier it gets, the more stress is put on the low back. Okay? We have this center point, which is this big bone on your foot. That's the center point. The closer you can keep the weight to this point, the more leverage you're going to have, the more weight you're going to pull, less chance for injury. That makes sense? That goes on any movement. Okay? So you can see, right off the bat, this is in the center, right? The only way I keep it in the center is by closing the car door. Because now the knees are out of the way, I can keep it close. Okay? So just bring it down to the knee here. Just a slight bend in the knees. You should feel lots of tension in the hamstrings here. Hold that position for me right there. Let's take a look at these neutral spots. The stick should be right on your knee, on your legs. Go ahead and bend your knees. There you go. Okay, now squeeze your butt to stand tall. Let's do it again. Close the car door, hinge to the knee. Bend your knees just a little bit. Stand tall. One more. Close the car door, face to your knees. And stand tall. All right. So that's the easier part of the deadlift. Now when we start to get around the knees, there's a little more that goes on and it's a little more difficult to stay in position. Okay, so you have to be patient. You have to let the bar clear the knees before you settle in. Okay, like I said, otherwise you're gonna have to go around the knees. Okay, so on this one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get organized, close the car door. Once I clear the knee, again, my hips and shoulders need to sink down at the same rate. Okay, hold that bottom for me. Heel should be on the floor. And then stand. Okay, let's do it again. Close the car door, take it to the knees, pause at the knees, and settle in mid shin. So hips and shoulders sink down at the same rate. And stand. One more time. Close the car door, take it to the knees, settle in mid shin. And stand. All right, go to rest. Okay, so now, flexibility wise, if you're super stiff through the hamstrings, you don't have many options. If that's the bad thing about being stiff, you run out of options. There's only a very small uh, positions you can get into to stay safe. If you have stiff hamstrings, you have to get the butt down lower. That's the only way you can keep the back flat. Otherwise, what's going to happen. So if you run out of hamstrings, but you keep dropping the torso, you're going to go into this position here. Okay, that's where issues occur. If you're flexible, your butt has a lot more positions it can be in. You can stay up a little higher here. You can drop it down. So there's a lot more positions and still maintain the spine. Okay. Um, a good rule of thumb is hip should be above my knees and shoulders should be in front of the bar. Can everybody see that? Okay, this is a good starting point. Okay, so let's everybody get into that bottom position. Your legs are going to be burning, that's a good thing. And let's take a look here. Take your butt up a little bit. Okay, take your butt up a little bit. Take your butt up a little bit. Take your butt up more. Take your butt up more. And step. All right, but rest, you got the legs a little bit. Okay? So, if you look at this bottom position, the further the knees are forward, the more 
pressure is on the knee. Okay? And then if you want to keep the shins as vertical as possible here. Again, this is going to be an issue if you have any stability issues. On this one, majority of you, your foot looks a little too low. Okay? So everybody get down. I want you to pick your butt up until you feel these hamstrings tight enough. You'll feel them get real tight. That's what you want. You want tension in the system. So go ahead and bring it down. Keep your chest down, but raise your hips until you feel that tension. Good. Hold for me. Drop your hips a little. All right, and again. Does everybody feel that? What? Oh, yeah. That's good. Okay, so the tension you want. <laughs> You know, again, if you don't have tension in the hamstring with the glutes, it's the quads that are going to take over, the low back that's going to take over. That's why we hear a lot of people do deadlift the next day they're back. So that's because they didn't have tension in the glutes and the hamstring. These are big muscles and they should be doing the majority of the work. Okay? If you're stiff, and like I said, if you're stiff, and as soon as I pick my foot up, this time is up, that's as far as you can go. It's just going to take time to improve that flexibility. Best way to improve that flexibility is to squat and bend. Okay. Um, so Mac, uh, we were talking about a belt before with the clinic here. A lot of people aren't sure how to use a belt correctly. The belt does very little for you in the deadlift and the squat. Okay. A lot of people think if I put a belt on, it's going to protect my back. That's not the case. It does very little bit. It's more beneficial for stabilizing when you have loads overhead. So if, you, if you do presses, if you do heavy presses, split jerks, and you have a load above, and you put a belt on, you'll feel a lot more stable here. Without the belt, you feel kind of wobbly. Okay? You should be able to create, you know, when you sit your belt down and you feel that, that tension, you should be able to create that using your body. Okay? If you, if you take a big breath into your diaphragm, so your belly, not your lungs, everybody try to feel your belly up there as much as you can. Yeah, you can feel that over there. So on this one, you're going to feel as much air as you can, and then sit down the abs. Like I said, if someone's going to walk by and stop you, you good. Sit that down. So take a big breath, and then sit you down. So what you're doing there is creating your own stability using your, your midline, your core. You don't need the belt. Okay? What happens when you do the belt and you don't have the core strength, you rely on the belt to protect your spine, and it's not going to protect your spine. Does that make sense? Okay. So no, no. I always no. recommend mm. until you get to oh, wait, one rep maxes, two rep maxes, which even those very few people should get into unless you have thousands and thousands and thousands of reps and you know you're moving correctly. Okay? If you start using a belt and you're only lifting a, a barbell or you know, 50 pounds or whatever, you're going to stop using those muscles and you're going to go out in the belt. You're actually going to get weak in those positions. You know, you see a lot of people at work or they have you know labor jobs. They put belts on because they think it's protecting the back. It's actually making you weaker because you're relying on that belt. So if you ever go to pick up your child and you're not used to creating tension, that's where you get hurt. Okay. So there's a time and a place for the belt, but it's way down the road and for very specific purposes. Does that make sense, everybody? <laughs> okay, so now let's work on this bottom position a little bit more. We're also going to work on bracing, what we just talked about, so you don't have to use the belt. Okay, so before we go down, we're going to add one more piece to your getting organized. So let's get set. We're in our hip width. Shoulders are pulled back and down. Abs are tight. Butt's tight. Okay, take that big breath. Cinch it down. You should be able to stay active and still pop. You can stay braced and still pop. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. Close the car door on the same brace. Down to the knees. Once I clear the knees, settle in. I'm still braced. Don't lose tension here. Hips and shoulders rise back up to the knee. And squeeze your butt. A few more here. Close the car door. Take it to the knee. Stay braced. Settle in. Back up to the knee. Squeeze your butt. Keep moving like that. Give me three more. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Good job. You okay, Kelly? Oh, yeah. I can <laughs> savor every moment of the day. I can savor cooking. That's good. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. So we have a little bit of time. I want to I want to get a little bit of weight on you guys. Okay, everybody's moving pretty good. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna put your sticks back in this corner and then come back to this back corner. I'm gonna give you guys a barbell. Oh crap, I didn't bring water. Me too. Huh? I forgot my water. You can take it there for mine. I don't know. Okay, who has uh, never done this before? Okay. Okay, does anybody have any pain right now? What do you think you've gone over? Pretty good so far? Just tight? Just tight it erect you here? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. If it gets too bad, let me know. Or let me know and we'll go back to the stick. Okay? All right, so we're going to have a little bit of load. It's an empty barbell, but it's still enough load to cause any issues. So we're going to take it slow. We're going to focus on everything we've been going over. Okay? So right off the bat, we have to pick the bar up off the floor. So even though we're just getting into the position, we still have to bend the chip, right? So get organized, put your back and down. You have to get nice and low, lift with your legs. So everybody go and pick it up. All right, so stance, remember, hip width, grip. Now we have these little lines on the bar. So we're gonna go thumbs distance outside that line. We're going to have a full grip on the bar. Okay, right off the bat, we're going to get organized. We're so going to pull your hips back and down. You're going to take that big breath, lock in the abs. You're going to squeeze your butt. Okay, we're going to close the car door. Keep the bar on your thighs here. Don't let it hang out here in front. Nice and slow, take it to the knee. Yeah. Keep the yeah. knee back. And then settle in just to mid shin. Pause right I'll here. I'll walk on the floor. Chest. Has citric acid on it, drying up. Put your take your feet. Just the iPad again. iPad? Uh, yes. Close the car door. Take it to the knee. Keep the bar right on your thighs. Settle in mid shin. Back up to the knee. Squeeze your butt. Okay, give me three more on your own. Just nice and slow, like we were doing. Big chest cover. Okay, 
Uh, if you finish your three, watch your back setting it down. So you're just going to deadlift it down to the floor. How's the back there, sir? Still tight? So that brings up a good point, though. Good, good. You can set it down there, Kelly. What's that? If you have flexibility, you don't need small. Uh, okay, so good thing. Uh, what's your name? Junior. Junior. So, Junior's back tying up a little bit. Very common when you deadlift or squat, especially if you're not used to it. So, what happens a lot of times is someone will deadlift or squat, they're new to it, back tying up, they think they're doing it wrong. Okay? It doesn't necessarily mean you're doing it wrong. It's probably be because poor positions we talked about in the beginning. So, maybe you sit 8, 10, 12 hours at work, or you commute, or for some reason you have tight hip flexors. Okay? 90% of back pain comes from the hip flexors. All the hip flexors tie up into your spine. When the hip flexors are tight, you have all that tension pulling on your spine. When you have more stress and more bill, then it's going to line up with you. All it's doing is giving you a cue that I got, you got something going on there. It's not, it's Sophia? Not, okay. So Sophia? I, when people say, I can't get it, but I can't squat. So, so I, here. You know, maybe they went to see some. Don't squat and deadlift if it's hurting your back, okay? Because that's actually how you're going to improve any issues you have going on there, okay? If you're not sure, that's where you need to ask, ask, ask a professional, ask somebody to watch you. Yeah, okay. You're doing things right, okay? Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about on how to get relief to the hip flexor. Um, so a lot of us are still getting way too low in the bottom here. And it's because this is a much easier position than this. The body has to work much harder here. So it has to create that torque and that tension we were talking about. So there's more muscle fire, fibers firing, which causes more discomfort, which makes it more painful. Uh, but that's the position we need to get into. Okay? So everybody go to pick your bar back up. Uh, Junior, let's go to this. I want to piss that back off more. Okay, organize. Pull your shoulders back and down. Take that big breath. Lock in the abs. Squeeze your butt cheeks. Okay, close the car door. Just take it to the knee. Now pause there. Okay, once you clear the knee, I only want you dropping your hips two, three inches, not all the way down. Okay, settle in two, three inches. Pause. Okay, now stand. That looks much better. Squeeze your butt at the top. Here we go again. Cl close the car door. Take it to the knee. Just settle in two, three inches down. And stand. Yeah, now we're looking better. Give me three more on your own. Keep getting in that same position. Junior, if it's super tight, go ahead and rest a little bit. I know that sucks. Keep your hips a little higher, Sydney. Okay, so that's going to look much better on that one. Okay, the deadlift, don't get your butt so low. And like I said, that's going to turn on the quads, the low back's going to work a lot harder. Raise those hips to where you feel those hamstrings tighten up. Okay? Last piece I want to hit on the deadlift. It's the same torque we were talking about on the squats, right? When we were talking about the torque. You still need that torque on the deadlift, it's just not as extreme. Okay, in the squat, the knees are way out here. On the deadlift, they're right in here, but you're still turning off the glutes. Okay? A lot of times, we'll get this in a deadlift. Okay, there's that same position, there's no activation in the glutes or hamstring, it's all right here. Okay? So all you need, that's why we set thumbs distance outside this line, that gives you enough room to get those knees out. Okay, your knees are just thrushing your forearms there. As soon as you do that, you can feel your buns light up. Okay? So pick your bar back up. Okay? 
get organized. Shoulders, big breath, brace, squeeze your glutes. Last piece, screw your feet into the floor. Keep those screwed in. Now, close our car door. Don't forget about the knees. Take it to the knee. Settle in two, three inches, pop. Your knees should be out. Try them out too. All right, stand. Squeeze your butt at the top. Okay, give me four more on your own. That looked much better. Keep that going there. You should feel your backside working much harder now. Those are the muscles you want working. Your further, go ahead and set it down correctly and breath. All right. Much better. Okay, good job. You guys keep those knees out. Um, back's looking nice and flat. He said, if all else fails, keep the back flat. Okay, the knees tracking in and the load sequence, yes, it's not ideal, um, but you're still going to be safe as long as the spine is flat. Okay? If you're losing that neutral spine, you don't have a choice. I mean, your chance for injury goes to scratches. Okay, whether you're picking up a pencil or you're picking up 400 pounds. Okay. Um, any questions on there? I know that's kind of a lot of information. I have a question of the top of your position. Yes. So you should keep your not your spine neutral then too. So you shouldn't be arching back. Yeah, yeah. Because I have a bad habit of doing that myself. Yeah. So. So great question. That's very common in the deadlift too. Is you know everybody looks great in the bottom. And then they get to the top and they go into this position here. Okay. There's still a shitload of load on your spine. Right you still have however much weight you're lifting. That's still putting all this pressure on your spine. So what's happening there is if I can overextend, that means my abs aren't engaged. If my abs are tight when we breathe in place, I can't unblock. I can't go back. As soon as I lose engagement, I can go back as far as I want. Okay. So all you need to do when I tell you squeeze your butt, that's all you need to do. So if you squeeze your butt cheek, that puts you in neutral. That's neutral. I can't go any further than that unless I lose this. Okay? So don't overthink. Don't try to find neutral. Just squeeze your butt cheek. And if you're braced, it locks you right into neutral. Make sense? Good question. Good question. Um, so now, flexibility wise, I know we're all stiff. Um, we get, we're in poor positions all the time. So the best way to work on that um, who here has a, a job where you sit? You know, eight, 10, 12 hours. Okay. Does anybody commute a lot? Commute? Uh, does anybody sit at home a lot? So, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. We all do. So the, the sitting is what's killing everybody. Okay. So not, nowadays, you know, it's not like uh, uh, back when you have to, you know, go, go find food, farm, labor work, like a lot of times. Everything is about convenience and comfort now. So we sit a lot more. That's what's calling causing all these issues. Okay. COVID. Um, yeah, I mean, nobody had nobody had to go to work. You could stay in your PJs, jump on the couch, and exactly. get to work. So yeah, it really did mess up everybody. Um, so if at all possible, don't sit that much. Okay. If, if if you have a, if you have to sit at a desk, there's standing desks. I know they're expensive. When I have to do computer work, I set up two boxes and I put it on top. Okay, it sounds funny, but the sitting is, 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 especially if you have back pain, hip pain, knee pain, it's all coming from uh, the 90 degree angles. This 90 degree angle is what's killing everybody when you sit. Your ankles are stuck at 90, your knees are stuck at 90, your hips are stuck at 90, your elbows are stuck at 90. So, and we're usually in these kinds of positions, right? So you do this for 10, 12 hours, you're gonna form into that same shape. So then you go to dead at the bar and then your back lights up. Okay. Um, so try to avoid sitting as much as possible. So what you can do, like I said, first off, squatting and deadlifting, that's right away going to improve the flexibility because you're taking your body through range of motion that's not used to. If you're down here, like you're rarely in this position at work. So this is going to open up the hips and your deadlift, you're rarely in this position. That's going to open up the hamstring. 
So if I, at all still, it's quite good. It's going to improve. You just can't go heavy until you fix those problems. Make sense? Okay. Number two is soft tissue work. So basically, soft tissue work is uh, like a deep tissue massage. If you have ever had a massage, it's not one of those nice soothing ones. Um, you actually have to get down in, into those layers and break up that tissue. Okay. Uh, all these different layers are designed to slide and glide. If they're not sliding and gliding, they're stuck. So that's where you kind of run into your malt. Okay. So that's you can if if you can go get a massage, or there's lots of ways to do it yourself. Okay. Basically, it's putting pressure anywhere you have pain, um, above and below the joint. For example, if you have knee pain, you're gonna hit all the tissue below and above the joint. Because all you're doing is getting slack to that joint. Okay. And it can be as simple as as driving your own elbow into your quad, you know. If it's tender and it hurts, that area needs some loving, okay? You should be able to press on areas and not have pain. So you should be able to put a lot of pressure, and if there's no pain, that tissue is healthy. If it's real tender, you gotta work on it, okay? So you really can't do it wrong, okay? Uh, third one is gonna be your stretches, okay? I'm, I'm just going over hips mostly because that's where most people have issues. Like I said, when you're sitting down, the hips close, so everything shortens up and gets locked in this place. So to stretch it, you just have to do the complete opposite. Whatever you can do to open the hip up. So this is one of my favorites. If you get it, let's not see, let's all do it. Everybody needs it anyways. So get down into a nice big lunge here. What you want to do is get your knee way behind your hip. Okay? And your chest is vertical. Squeeze your butt cheek, keep your abs tight. If you have tight hip flexors, you should feel this right here. Can everybody feel that? Okay. If you don't have issues, you probably don't feel much, which is a good thing. Um, but here, when you get into the stretching, you want to hold for a minimum of two minutes. Okay, you can't just stretch for 10, 20 seconds and call it good. It takes at least two minutes to create change in tissue. Okay? So if, if you guys don't want to open this up, we would hang here, set a timer, and at least two minutes, and then go to the switch. Let's see how that other side feels. Question so like with that, especially like when you lay down, I always get that cramp but right here. So it makes me want to just okay. Up. So you can you can um you have sciatic the nerve damage to sciatica. So I don't know like used to get shocked and everything and now he doesn't because he's doing this to like certain things like bending into it. Yeah. So there, you know, getting down on the floor is a much deeper position. So you could, you know get on a couch or a chair and, and just get into this position here. You can still open the hip and it doesn't require quite as much stress in the system. Okay? So just elevate it to where you can open the hip up. Okay. okay. Um, go ahead and rest there, guys. Okay. Now the static stretching I'm talking about for two minutes, you will only want to do that post-workout. Okay. Before your workout, it's all about getting warmed up, jump on the treadmill, bike, roller, two, three minutes, get the blood flowing. And then so some quick dynamic stretches. So you can hit that, but you want to keep moving. So keep moving, look for any tight corners, you know, come back out, come back in. This is dynamic stretching. It's not going to lengthen the tissue. You don't want to lengthen the tissue before a workout. Okay? Post-workout is when you, where you want to get in there and a deep stretch. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. Um, any questions? You know, that's I know that's a bunch of information, especially if you never squatted or deadlift. Um, but I want to kind of squeeze as much in as I could. So is there anything that you guys really wanted to come and learn that you're still not sure about or anything I talked about that you're not sure about? Everybody's good? Okay, main point, back stays flat and squat and deadlift. If you're not, if you're not loaded, squat and deadlift. Even if it's wrong, you're not gonna hurt yourself. You just can't put weight on it until you fix that. Cool? All right, group. Uh, thanks for coming. We're going to put our barbells back on the holder there. Watch your back kicking it up. Thank you.
Tony, did you get all that? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, you know, I wanted to ask you, thank you, thank you, Coach. I wanted to ask you, um, you know, because I'm, I'm still learning this stuff. When, when I come up, when I come up out of the, the, the squat, right, huh? my, my weight is shifting. I can feel my weight shifting from my toes to my heels. Right. And am I supposed to drive the weight off of my heels? So you have three points on your foot. Right, you have right. The, all your foot, the two big bones, and then your heel creates this right. tripod. There should be right. equal weight on that tripod. It should, it should be equal. All three, all three points need the same amount of weight. Okay, because I think I, I mean, it's probably obviously it's because I have flexibility issues. Correct. Uh, that and just because it's new movement. Okay. Okay. Anytime I'll you, you start a new movement, your balance is going to be all over. The more and more reps you get in, your brain will start to find that balance. Okay. Okay. We'll do. Um, yeah. uh, thank you again, coach. I'm going to be doing those, uh, those movements. Uh, what, what should I do three days a week? Uh, so start with one, make sure you squat. Uh, are you going to be doing them loaded or body weight? I'm, I'm just going to do with the bar for now and then I'll start loading them up maybe after a month. Yeah. So if you're going to keep it light, you can squat twice a week and deadlift twice a week. Okay. We'll do. When, as soon when as you start I... to increase load, then we'll have to slow down a bit. I'm sorry? As soon as you start to increase the load, okay. then, then we might drop back to one squat a week and one deadlift a week. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so cool. much. Thanks for jumping on. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for, for, thanks for having it on Zoom. Appreciate it. All right, buddy. Have a good one. Okay. You too. Take care. Later.